in a Catholic family crippled by the effects of generational child abuse. My childhood was nothing less than a fight for emotional and psychological freedom. At the age of 19, after two nervous breakdowns, I reached a point where I no longer wanted to live. Struck with the realization of this irreversible decision, I reached out for help in the tradition I was familiar with, Christianity. I experienced a profound conversion that radically altered my life. I became a Christian evangelist and dedicated myself to missionary work. My inner world had been so dramatically changed by what Christianity called the Holy Spirit that I left my family and friends to embark on a spiritual quest. It would be years later that I would make the connection of this mysterious power to the Kundalini energy of Eastern mysticism and Western occultism. I got involved with a Christian cult bound by an oath of death which I escaped through a trial by fire. I traveled to the island of Haiti as a missionary to save souls and preached the gospel on a local cable show in Camarillo, California. I sang for a Christian ministry in Palm Springs, California and joined a missionary school called YWAM in Oregon. My born-again experience activated a radical curiosity filled with unending questions about reality. I challenged the Christian doctrine by asking questions the pastors could not answer, resulting in being excommunicated from their churches. My departure from the faith further distanced me from my family, leaving me without support. I was on my own. This relentless search was fueled by a shamed imagination and deep childhood wounds. Like a swimmer fighting for his life in a whirlpool of flashbacks, conflicting emotions, and unforgiving illusions, my recurring dreams molested me in the black night. To my surprise, decades of inner work only sharpened my blade and turned me into a subjective explorer. From the age of four, the nightmares and out-of-body experiences became a temple of initiation, preparing my nervous system for an ancient current that one day would be released in its full power. Hungry for a truth and resolution, I sought out the teachings of the Ascended Masters, Eastern mysticism, New Age channeling, non-duality, UFOs, government conspiracies, Scientology, and meditation. The more I learned, the more I realized I had been smitten by the incurable search for truth. I felt like an unborn child going through birth pains as I ventured through the jungle of spirituality. I moved to Sedona, Arizona in pursuit of the teachings of Drumbolo Melchizedek and the Flower of Life and a desire to launch my musical career. At the age of four, my mother handed me a guitar and I took to it naturally. I developed a sense within that felt like I was answering the call of a mystical piper. Goosebumps guided me like a whispering wind, wooing me to deeper depths of sound. Enchanted by the rock group Led Zeppelin around the age of 12, I became intoxicated with their sound and the occult inspirations that breathed life into their songs. I felt Sedona was the perfect place to launch my musical creations. Armed with a relentless study of Scientology tech, shadow work, Val Valerian's Matrix volumes, Theosophy, and Zen, I wanted to be in the heart of the New Age community and experience all I could firsthand. My path led to many teachers who handed me keys of insight, guiding me through the spiritual maze littered with detours pitfalls, dangers, and dead ends. Once again, my curiosity led to a radical investigation of spiritual teachings. I noticed along the way spiritual people who flashed their love and light around with clothing, jewelry, crystals, hugs, platitudes of divine authority, and miraculous claims they could never produce. Their actions and behavior demonstrated nothing more than human qualities. 
With evangelical passion, they preached they were divine beings creating their reality through a physical container called a body. They diminished the natural world to an illusion, touting they chose to come to earth and that everybody chooses their suffering. Enter in the Jews choosing the Holocaust, women choosing rape, and children choosing horrific abuse. Having been a believer in this doctrine for many years, my doubts grew into inescapable questions. Were these teachings nothing more than fantasy built on the foundation of other religions? Were they more of a distraction from the truth? Were they pitted against the physical world and the body? And if so, why? Had I been bamboozled? Armed with the power of doubt that had guided me through childhood trauma, Christianity, and New Age cults, my programming reached a critical threshold in 2012. Hailed as the great year when the world would be changed through massive cataclysms and the faithful would ascend into dimensions filled with aliens, angels, and ascended masters, I had a human awakening. In one moment, the shackles fell off and my mind opened up to a freedom I never expected. The very thing I was seeking became the barrier I was to transcend. The spiritual dimension no longer lived outside of me, but was a vibrant living ecosystem within. The gods, angels, demons, and aliens lived within as archetypes projected onto the world around me. Out-of-body experiences became inner body experiences, and spiritual visions became meaningful hallucinations rooted in the mysterious language of the body. Inspired by this awakening, a book I felt destined to write since the age of 29 literally wrote itself in three months. The title, Unspirituality, Permission to be Human, rang in my ears like an ominous gong reverberating through the corridors of my body. I felt compelled to expose the bamboozle with a vengeance. Living in the heart of the New Age and surrounded by a large network of spiritual friends, I knew I was to go against the grain and put out the message. My message was a realization that all spiritual phenomenon was created by the human organism in harmony with the natural world and that the New Age teachings were at war with physical reality. Religion and spirituality had hijacked our inner world and staked claim with the flag of dualism. They stole the sacred traditions of Native Americans and diminished our native reality to an illusion. The domain of magic and wonder was corrupted through marketing for personal gain behind the mask of love and light. I launched the website unspirituality.com in 2013. And then in 2016, I launched the Unspirituality YouTube channel and went after the bamboozle with a vengeance. We're tired of the fake science. We're tired of the fake prophecies. We're tired of the fake predictions. We're tired of the phony love. We're tired of the projection. You cannot buy a stairway to heaven. Not only had I parted ways with many spiritual friends, but the backlash against a one-man army was overwhelming. Fighting the good fight, I closed my channel a number of times due to exhaustion. But people from around the world continued to contact me sharing their experience of how my book and videos changed their lives. This feedback gave me the courage and strength to continue on with this work and reopen the channel. During my entire journey, I had numerous kundalini experiences, leading to what I call the big one. Triggered by the left-hand path current of Led Zeppelin's song, Stairway to Heaven, I entered an enchanted world for five weeks. I went through a human metamorphosis I could have never imagined possible. My old self shed like a snake skin, giving birth to my seed self that was suddenly named Zen. Everything was specific. I had been truly born from within. I knew things about the inner world I used to hear gurus talk about. I knew them firsthand, forged in experience.
These were things I thought were out of reach for seekers like me. I did not choose this. I was compelled by the sacred monster within. That leviathan of truth emerging from the sea of delusion, the unconscious, into a fiery explosion of power. Within this magical ordeal, I found my lost chord. The musical sound I intuitively felt since the moment I picked up the guitar bloomed like a rose. I called it Zen Song. In 2012, I knew I was going to write my story, but something was missing. I tried to write it a number of times, but with no success. But now, beyond any doubt, I knew that crazy missing part was set in place. The story was complete, and I wrote it in the winter of 2015.